Join us now on Flickr at flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. Everybody, welcome back once again to the Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes, and last time we talked about uh, large format cameras, and I told you I was going to talk about movements and what happens when you adjust all these wild knobs on here and what they do to the dif different standards on here. Um, the first thing I want to talk about here is just to review real quick. The large format camera, I'm going to lift the lens shade for this. The large format camera is comprised of a few things. Um, it's comprised basically of two standards. There's a rear standard, which holds the film and a front standard which holds the lens. There are bellows between the two. This keeps the area dark between the, uh, the lens and the film plane. And then what you have across the camera are a series of knobs and things. This is a lens shade to cut down on glare, things like that. And so what happens and what effects do you uh, aim to achieve by dealing with different, what these are called movements, when I adjust the position of each standard. Okay, now right now everything is pretty much dead on and this is no different than a regular camera would be. The film plane is even with the, uh, with the uh, uh, with, the, with the focal plane where the film sits is even with the lens plane. And what I'm going to show you here is there's a series of things you can do. Um, the first one is we're going to deal with uh, what's known as rise and fall. Okay, And rise and fall simply means, and, and there's also shift and they're the same thing, rise and fall adjusts any, either one of the standards. We'll deal with the front in all our examples here. But it deals with moving the front standard either up or down. Now what this does is it changes its juxtaposition to the film plane back here. So it's either going to go down and it's it's going to uh, have a different view over there or go up and it'll have a different view uh, also. Um, consequently, you can also do what's called shift where you move this front standard from side to side and I'll show you how all this works. Okay, now why would you want to do this and what is it used for? Well, uh, let's say that you want to deal with something like you're shooting a building, okay? And you want the building, uh, when, think of it this way, when you're standing at the foot of a building and you wouldn't be this close probably, uh, but if you're standing at the foot of a building looking up, you're going to see the parallel lines that run along the side of the building. You know they're straight, but your eye sees them as converging. Okay, uh, think back to like when you took drawing classes in high school and you dealt with vanishing points when you're dealing with 3D subjects, and that's the the effect that you get. Are parallel lines appear uh, to be at an angle, and this can be a real problem when you're doing architectural photography. Maybe you don't want that view; you want that to be corrected. Uh, well, the couple options you have are either getting a huge lift and raising the entire camera, or you can simply use this rise and fall technique. And if I loosen the locking bolts here, you can see that when I move these knobs this way it, it falls and when I move them this way you can get rise to the camera. I'll show you that. So what you're going to be able to do is the effect that this gets is that you'll look like you're shooting from a much higher um, uh, distance or a high, higher point than you actually are. And so that's a real handy tool in correcting that. Consequently, if you're shooting a fence or something like that and you're at an angle, uh, you can use the shift to go right and left. Um, so that's a very handy thing to have. Uh, and we talked about kind of barrel distortions, the lens, things like that that also contribute to that. And this is a way of correcting those. And so what you want to do probably is get your shot as close to perfect as you can and then you can uh, then you can mess with the rise fall tilt and shift and and suit it to your needs which is uh, a much easier thing to do now I, I have on this camera two ways of controlling that I can do it from the front standard I can also rise and fall from the rear standard on the film plane so you can get some pretty dramatic shifts in here if, if required um, the one problem you might run into when you have that much control is just making sure the lens has enough coverage of the film plane and most lenses if you have the right lens on there will uh, this one specifically probably Probably will not because it's designed for a, uh, a much smaller, uh, it was designed for a Polaroid camera, but it's still a 4x5, but it just didn't have movements on it. Um, actually, it wouldn't quite 4x5 if I recall correctly. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually used a Pathfinder because they don't make the film anymore. It's long gone. Okay, so those are the first two movements that you can do are rise, fall, and then shift. Okay, and they do the same thing. The second thing you can do is you can actually use what's called tilt. And what I can do is I can actually, let's see, if I loosen these, I can make it so I can tilt this front standard down or I could also tilt it up. Now why would you want to do that? Well, the reason, actually there's, a, there's another method of tilt too down here. If I unlock this bolt down here, you can actually pull the whole standard towards you this way or you can push it back towards that way. Now this is a studio camera like we were talking about and a field camera probably doesn't have the across axis point. Um, it just simply tilts from the base. Uh, nothing wrong with that. They can kind of achieve the same effect. Now here's what the effect is. Um, 
if you're shooting, and most of you are probably familiar with depth of field, we've talked about that in a couple episodes. And depth of field basically is how deep the focal, um, the focal field is. So for instance, uh, if I want to shoot a portrait of somebody and I want to blur out the background, I would use a shallow depth of field. So my area of focus might be a couple inches, it might be a foot, something like that. Everything that's not in that focal range is out of focus. Okay, and one of the difficulties with this is if you look on the side of any lens where it starts showing you the, um, uh, the, the measurements in feet of how close, how far away you are, you'll notice that just the way the lens works is there's much greater tolerance at closer distances than there is at longer distances. So if I'm shooting a landscape, for instance, and maybe it's a bunch of buildings and there's some little cars down below, uh, you see this a lot, websites like Flickr, people are doing this, uh, where you can do a tilt shift effect. And really it's mainly they're dealing with the, more the tilt than shift. Shift is for correcting something and the tilt is gonna deal with that of field. It's hard to get depth of field at big sizes and long distances just because of the way lenses work. You're not going to be able to get a shallow depth of field when you're a mile away from something, uh, you know, shallow depth of like a foot or something like that. It's just not going to happen. So if you want the cars to appear in focus, but maybe the buildings right behind them to not, that's going to be really hard, if not impossible to do on a standard camera. Now, however, you can obviously do effects in Photoshop, but if you want to do it from the camera, uh, and I think you get the most interesting effect doing it from a camera, you're going to use that tilt. Now, here's how it works. The, the film plane back here, okay, is basically just a straight line and the film sits, you know, just right along that line. And if I move, okay, and so what I'm doing is that the lens is out here and I'm projecting the image onto there, okay. So in its essence, when I focus my subject, it's in focus against that film plane, okay, because that's where the picture is being taken from for. And this is either digital or film cameras, it doesn't make any difference, it'd be a sensor back here instead of a piece of film. Okay, so what happens is if I, if I tilt that front lens, it's going to throw the focal length side to side like this, or you could also do it this way. And, but what's going to happen is, is that things in the middle here will stay in focus and things on either side of that will drift out of focus. So basically what you're doing is you're getting some depth of field back just from the camera and you're actually forcing it into play there. You probably don't need it on macro shots or closer distances because the, the lens will have enough depth of field for what you're looking to do on that. Uh, however, larger landscape types of things, uh, groups of people, things like that, if you want kind of an artistic blurred effect, uh, you can achieve it by by using uh, tilt on either the front or the rear standard. Both these movements happen on uh, either side here. So that's a very important thing. Also, um, uh, so, but anyway, just to reiterate, so you do get rise fall on both standards. You get uh, side to side, and that's the shift on both cameras, and then you get tilt on both standards. Sorry, not cameras. Uh, the tilt occurs in two ways. You can do it from the lens axis here, if you use these top knobs, or I could tilt that entire standard by using the bottom ones. So those are the two effects that you can get with large format cameras, and you can also combine the two. So for instance, if you needed to correct parallel lines and throw them out of focus, you could do that. Uh, you can also, I, I should mention too, if we've, if we've moved that focal point, it would be technically in the middle of the picture. I could also use rise and fall or shift side to side to throw that focal point around onto the negative or the, or the digital sensor, whichever you're using. So you get a lot of control that way. Now, uh, for the most part, this is limited f with this many movements to large format photography to 4x5, 8x10 and up. Um, you can do it, however, on digital SLRs and 35 millimeter cameras, even at that. Um, the big companies, Nikon and Canon, have built uh, lenses that do tilt shift. And so you'll see, they, I think Canon has like a 35 millimeter tilt shift. I think there may be something in the 40 millimeter range, 45 millimeter range, and then usually the 90 millimeter range. And they don't have near as much motion, obviously. You can't adjust the rear standard on a camera. Um, but they do have, you can actually shift the lens and you can spin it to use rise and fall. Or you could uh, also, uh, move the lens to tilt to get the blur effect too. And so you see, I mean, that's kind of a popular technique that a lot of people use now um, in photography, particularly with long distances where you make like cars and cities look like little miniature objects because you're throwing them out of focus. So they look like they were taken in a much smaller scale with like a portrait focal length, something like that. So anyway, those are some effects that you can get out of using a large format camera. Anyway, that's all for today. We'll talk about some more next time. So once again, this has been The Art of Photography and thank you for watching.